Hello everyone, Indie Voice here. Today we're going to talk about a subject that has been flowing about the industry regarding the quality of games between two sides of the same game industry coin. Talking about indie developers versus AAA tile companies and their games. Now the reason why I have thought of this entire subject is because I have been thinking about this for a while and seeing over the years how the quality dwindled on one side but risen really high on the other makes me wonder. Many gamers have noticed a decline in the quality of AAA title games from the major game companies. One primary reason for this decline is the pressure of releasing games on a tight schedule, often resulting in rushed and incomplete games being released to the public. Additionally, many companies prioritize profit over quality, leading them to cut corners and releasing games that are buggy, unoptimized, and filled with microtransactions. Another factor is increasingly complexity of game development, which can lead to development teams being strict to a thin and unable to fully polish the final product. This especially is true for open world games where there are many variables that need to be accounted for. In some cases, companies may also outsource development to studios with less experience leading them to lower quality games. Now, After hearing that, I am telling you that this is pretty much where we're at right now where it comes to AAA tile companies and their games. It is obviously known, you see it every day, you see with the recent games that have been released i mean cyberpunk 2077 was one of those games and now it has been polished and it's better at least than what it was when it first released now why i'm bringing up this note entirely is because generally thinking about how these powerful companies these really big time companies like Capcom and the rest of them, you see that the amount of games coming from them, especially when you're expecting to spend maybe over $60 per game, depending on where you live. And each time a game is released, you run into the same issue of the dreaded day one patch. Every time we have a game from the AAA title industry or a game company, you have a sudden update which generally fixes any issues or updates or things that may need to be fixed over time that they generally did not get the time to fix or even get to on their schedule. I generally need help understanding on how several high-end gaming companies release these mediocre or not really polished or finished games or even the difference between their trailers that shows a game that looks really good and then by the time it's released, it is like a probably a 20 to 30 dollar looking game. Still, when you see it in a indie game developer releasing a game or showing a trailer of their game, majority of the time, or at least about estimated 90% of the time, you see the game come out as is, maybe even better than what you've seen. It gives me more reasons to buy more indie games than it does AAA title games. To prove a point, if you haven't heard the news when it was released, Baldur's Gate 3, we all love the game, amazing game, one of the best games of this year. Many AAA title developers and their companies came out the woodwork after seeing this game. Most of these say AAA tile devs find Baldur's Gate 3 an anomaly, Baldur's Gate 3 should not be the norm for RPGs, and so on. Now you know when developers or game companies in the AAA tile studios shouldn't even be threatened by this. This should inspire you to make better games or go through the lengths to make higher quality games for those or players that buy the games. Also, can I talk about how AAA tile game companies seem to be on this spree of of how many games can have battle passes or microtransactions for the smallest cosmetics. As much as that has worked for Fortnite or at least some of the things that they do, it is understandable, but not for every game. Don't you miss the days where AAA title game companies actually released a game, fully done, finished, didn't have to go crazy about when this needed to be done or the super thin tight schedule that made no sense? Everyone was excited about the days of the golden age of gaming where like, you know, old G4 TV era, that moment where you were excited to see what games are coming out, what cheat codes, things like that. Another thing that I've noticed is that in most AAA tile developers should take the time to go back to the roots of what they used to do instead of going down the path of a game that is not even new or even try a new mechanic or something that actually is worth the price. For example, 
what I want to see from Ubisoft is maybe a new Rayman game, you know, a brand new one or remaster the ones that he has done before in the Dreamcast. There's a lot of ways you can go about this. If someone or anyone, if Ubisoft wants to hand over the rights to Rayman to an indie developer, they could probably make something better or make a new Golden Sun game. How about Nintendo start a program for indie game developers to create games using their IPs? Not Pokemon, but have a percentage shared amongst each other so then everybody is on the same side, no IPs are stolen, and they have the Golden Seal from Nintendo to actually start doing this type of thing. Or, you know, how about companies learn from Sega when it comes to indie devs making new Sonic the Hedgehog games and intensely appreciating them? Or, you know, hey Bandai, how about you make a new anime game instead of spamming out the same thing over and over again? I have seen more SAO games than I have to. And even with this new Jujutsu Kaisen game, I'm a little bit iffy on how that game is being made. They should have just made it into more of an open world or something entirely different different than what I see in this trailer that doesn't look really even remotely interesting. This should give you more reasons to invest more in indie games and their developers for five reasons I can give you. Creativity Innovation Indie games often have more creativity and innovation gameplay mechanics as the expectations of a large publisher or a franchise do not constrain the developers. This allows more experimentation and risk taking, creating unique and memorable gaming experiences. Two, focusing on storytelling. Indie games prioritize over storytelling over flashy graphics and gameplay. Sometimes some of them can do both. This can lead to a more emotionally impactful and thought-provoking gaming experience as well. Three, lower price point. Indie games often lower their price point than AAA title games, which makes them more accessible to gamers who may not have the financial needs or resources to purchase an $80 to $60 game today. Four, Supporting Indie Developers By purchasing indie games, gamers can support indie developers and help them create unique and innovative games. So the more you support them, the more we can see more content coming from these particular companies that can make better things for us in the future. And lastly, number five, community and accessibility. Indie games often have smaller or tight-knit communities, which can lead to more engaging, meaningful interactions with other players. Additionally, many indie games are available on multiple platforms, which makes them more accessible to a broader audience. Because of the fact that you have Itch.io, you have Game Jolt, you have many other places to even play these games. You can play the demos from Kickstarters, you can play them in any sort of store or from Twitter or anywhere you can even access games from indie developers, which makes it even more you need to support them for what they do, how much they even bring up. I mean, there have been past indie games that weren't really the most hypest of all. Can we not say Mighty Number no. 9? There are just some questions that have been flowing around in my head just to show that indie developers can break new barriers every day with the games that they create, even with a genre that has been used multiple times. Someone can use a different perspective to make something even more groundbreaking than the last. To end this off, Take the time to look at AAA title games from developers of these companies of this year, most likely. Ask yourself, is it something that you expected? Is it good? Was it worth the $60 to $70, depending on where you're living, price point? Did you like the game? These are questions I take each time when I'm buying a game or when the game is developed. For example, for Spoken, it was a great concept, great idea, looked great visually, but overall the game was bad. Anthem, outstanding concept, great trailer, looked really promising, but then it released and it had a battle pass, cosmetics are overpriced, and the game barely worked like how it should or shown on the trailer. Now, when I see indie games, I see a small team, maybe one person, maybe an entire group is taking the time to create something unique, but they need the funding, the time to develop it to satisfy those that support their Kickstarters, Patreons, early access on Steam. These are games that are constantly getting support for their games throughout early access, saying what could be improved, what needs to be fixed, is there something too overpowered or underpowered, is there something that needs to be changed? These are the questions that most indie developers 
members will ask. Is there a break or is there a report that needs to be filed? Please do because each time you report those, it helps them improve their game even more. All these type of questions more indie developers get when you support them, which makes the games better or slightly delayed, which is never a problem. That's why I always tell most indie game developers, please take your time. It's always worth the wait to see your game finished to the point where you feel comfortable. You do not need to rush it because we want to see the game become what it's supposed to be. I do understand that developing a game takes a lot of time. I used to be a game designer myself, but when you look between indie and AAA title, you see one side doing a lot better, making amazing games, making new, unique unique mechanics, breaking all those barriers that not many other companies have ever done before or even attempted to try, while the other side is rushing development, super tight-knit schedules, stressing out the game developers, and the game comes out unpolished, day one patches needed, a whole bunch of issues start happening, and it is not even worth the price that has been shown. But anyway, thank you for listening to my rant. What do you think? Are AAA title developers on the right path here, or do you believe indie developers are very very much succeeding over AAA title companies. Leave a comment down below. This is just my honest opinion. I've had this thought on my head for a while, so I decided today to make a video about it. But thank you for watching this, and I hopefully see you next time. And check out the other videos on Indie Voice. Each and every one of these videos is to help the indie game developers with their games, supporting them. Maybe there may be a game that you have never seen before. There may be a game that may interest you. You should take out the time to check out these other game channels. They've done a lot of videos where it comes to supporting the indie industry such as Iron Pineapple, does a lot about soul games in that genre. Most Souls games you may or may not have heard of. You could check out Best Indie Games, talking about all the newest and latest indie games coming out. Gym Leader Ed, talking about monster taming games that you may have never seen before, does a lot of work on these. Of course, you could check out Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, both of them also support indie game developers and a lot of things they do on their channel. Thank you for watching this entire rant and hope to see you next time. See ya.